real name, of course, is Denny Hare, and I'm an author. I've written lots about Patton and have studied him most of my life. Um, Patton family has sets of my books, and they read them. And, uh, I enjoy doing what we do. Um, so people have a lot of questions about General Patton. He's probably one of the best known generals we've ever had, and he's almost become an American icon. So when they come out to these events, and I'm there, they ask lots of questions about General Patton. So since I'm pretty well versed on him, any question they ask, I answer. The band that you see behind me is an original World War II band. The original Patton van that he slept in is at the um, Fort Knox at the Patton Museum. But we recreated it in a way that you can go inside it. Everything in it works. It's all authentic. All the gear, all the uniforms, everything that you would have seen in the real Patton van with Patton Roy walking out of it. This is as if he just walked out of it today. Now, I wear the uniform and stuff because it gets people's attention. And when you're at an event where people are wearing uniforms and gear, it's a good thing to, if you're going to play Patton, to wear all the stuff. So we researched it to make sure that it's all co completely correct as he would have had it and worn it in the uniform. Uh, when Patton uh, commanded Third Army in the field, he had this van that was uh, designed, it's really a shop van, and they made it into a mobile office and a place for him to sleep. And uh, uh, many a general would go against the maps and he would tell them, well, I want you to do this and I want you to do that. Um, so what we did, we put it together exactly as it has it, as it once was. Pat the original one's at Fort Knox, but it's not interpreted. You can look at it from a distance, but you can't go in it. So we wanted something exactly as it was. So we made it every nut bolt is exactly as it was done then. And so you can come in, it had a Morris chair. Now the Morris chair was one of the first uh, um, reclining chairs that was invented and very popular. Patton would visit Lady Lease, who was the wife of a general, because she was the host of Patton's uh, Third Army in England. And while well, they were in Metzford in Cheshire, England. So his little dog Willie would jump up on it and when he decided that it was time for him to go to combat, he ended up getting a Morris chair. It's believed that Lady Lee's gave him one that the dog enjoyed. And that's still in the original Patton band. So I found an original Morris chair so we could put in it. Patton uh, slept. When everybody else was sleeping in other places, he would come and do this van. And this is where he would sleep. He kept, he had a vanity in there, a sink, and water. He had a radio that he could tune in to Armed Forces Radio while he was in here. One of the, the rarest items that we have in the van is an original scramble phone. Uh, the English developed this phone, so um, businessmen did before the war, so that they could um, talk in the words would be scrambled so if somebody couldn't plug into it and listen to it. Well, they were very aware that the Germans could plug into our lines and listen to our conversations. So the scramble phone developed by the British uh, was given to Patton so that he could have it in his van. So if General Eisenhower was to need to talk to him or General Bradley, this, the other phone would ring and they'd say, you need to take the scramble phone and he would pick it up and it would scramble his voice on this side it would go to whoever was calling on the other side if they had a scramble phone and he would then uh, be unscrambled and then they could talk without fear of the Germans uh, tapping into their wires. When I say wires, I mean telephone wires. They ran field wires from wherever he was as far as they could go. They had radios and stuff but they could be intercepted. The scramble phone was the best that they had in order to keep from the Germans listening. If, if, if you tied the regular tap into a, a, one of the field phones, you could hear exactly what they said, but in this one, it all scrambled. Now, he complained about it because he said he scrambled his words before he said it, but <laughs> that was his way of telling you he didn't like the thing very much. And all this works. We connect it to a, 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 a switchboard, and so when people come in, we'll bring the phone and they can talk on it to the switchboard. In reality, at his headquarters, all these wires would go to different places at his headquarters, and he could pick up the phone, the other phone, and he would say, uh, I need to talk to uh, Colonel Koch in G2. And so they would ring the switchboard 
and it would then go to the desk of Colonel Koch. And this was in the field out in the middle of, of Europe. And so that's the communications that was inside this van. Um, there's an autograph in here. He doesn't, he didn't listen to a lot of music, but he, he loved different languages. And so he was teaching himself Spanish while he was at, at, when he got back here and he'd play a record it had Spanish on it and it had English and he was trying to teach himself another language. He could speak German, he could speak French and so he wanted to learn another one. He was well read, he read everything. He even had a little library going. He had books that he thought he had uh, uh, Caesar's Commentary, he had uh, uh, Roger Kipling's uh, verse that he would read at his leisure when he had the time. In World War II um, you could actually power that radio by turning this crank and it had a uh, cord that went all the way through it and this has a generator in it that generates all kinds of different um, voltage and wattages. I don't understand it, he does. So what he thought he would do is try to teach that concept. So he decided, he, he knew that one of them was about six volts. Six. So he, he connected the wire to that one six volt. So let me show you how it works. I want you to come over here and, and, and sit down and crank it, okay? And when he does, now crank it. If he cranks it quick enough, he generates electricity and the light works. That's how that radio is, will work when all the cords are connected to the radio. So uh, they were pretty, uh, uh, did a lot in World War II that uh, it's really something to think about when you consider today's modern technology and what they had to work with back then. But if you don't have any batteries and you don't have a generator and you need your radio to work, this was the way to make it happen. When uh, General Patton uh, was in England, he wanted to have a command car better than the, uh, he had a half ton and he wanted a three-quarter ton that came out with the Dodge. It's a 230 flathead six. That's the, the, the fun part about it. But he had it modified. Underneath the back seat was steel plating that he got from a half track that they, they cut it out and they put it in the back and welded it in the back seat. He liked to stand up a lot and talk to his troops. So he had a bar. So when he was going down the road, he wouldn't fall down. It didn't have a radio in it. This one does. Now, he also had uh, the flags when you uh, a flag officer would usually have his rank flags and, and what he had but they usually had cloth flags well that would wear out quickly so he had them painted and he also had um, a plate put on from the same half track because sloped armor works a lot better now you can shoot through this obviously but if it's sloped it has a chance of ricocheting off and if you're going to try to stop a general you would and you were ground troops you'd probably try to hit the radiator if you could so he knew that also he had a 50 caliber machine gun that was mounted i don't i didn't bother we have one that we mount on there i didn't bother doing it here but th that was there and then nobody mounted a 50 caliber machine gun on a command car but pat and the reason he did he said look when the Luftwaffe flies over here the german air force they're going to see that this is a command car they're going to figure it's either command and reconnaissance or generals in it and if they shoot at me, damn it, I'm going to shoot back. And that's why he put a 50 on it. And for I don't think he ever, they ever fired the 50 from his command car. And the original doesn't exist. There's one that's being sold as being the original, but I asked him, does it have a steel plate in the back of it? And the answer was no. And so I knew right away that it was a great recreation, just like I recreated this one. This is a model uh, WC-57. It had a winch in the front. And that was the only model that had the winch in the front, and that's what he had in World War II.